and tonight we shall feast on whale meat. Man, you know, I'm not even upset. I don't think I'm upset. You know, this whole game I've been kind of just smiling and laughing. Just saying to myself, man, this Canucks team got into the second round. And they're playing the team that many Canucks fans would have preferred not to play. Because we all kind of understand just how good this opposing team is against Vancouver. We said this the entire time. Vegas has Vancouver's number. They've played nine or eight times. Vancouver's only won twice, and those were shootout and overtime wins. In my own playoff predictions video, I predicted the Canucks and the Vegas Golden Knights to meet in the conference finals, and I said Vancouver would lose in five. So, for me, watching this game, I wasn't really upset, you know? Like, I was just kind of looking at it, and I just kind of chuckled every time the Golden Knights scored a goal. You could say there's some mental illness there going on, but, like, man, I'm actually recording this with, like, four minutes left in the third period because I know that they're not going to win. Obviously, they're not going to win. It's going to be a one nothing series lead for Vegas. Spoiler alert there, people. But, like, I really could have started recording this video at the end of the second period, and it still would have had the same validity. So, today we're talking about the Canucks and the Golden Knights Game 1, and I'm gonna be honest. I don't want to say that the Canucks are done. Like, I know it's crazy, right? I'm the guy who, after Game 1 against Mini, I wrote the Canucks off. I said, it's 3 nothing. this team played terribly, this team is not going to win if they can't improve their game. I said, after Game number 4 in St. Louis, this team just choked up that 2 nothing series lead. St. Louis has momentum. They're going to win the series. It's going to be done. And I gave up on the team then. But for some reason, in this game one, where Vegas, Marcia so stole it, tries to go back. Oh my goodness, they almost got a sixth goal. In this game one against Vegas, where the Vancouver Canucks have played probably their worst game in the entire postseason thus far. I don't want to say they're done. For some reason, in my opinion, there's... A very strong belief that I hold, that has been formed after watching this team bounce back against Mini, and bounce back against Game 4 of St. Louis, that says that the Vancouver Canucks have honestly had a really good time adjusting and reforming to the teams that they play against. For some reason, in my heart, there is a present yet somewhat not all too confirmed belief that the Vancouver Canucks are going to find a way to bounce back. Now, I don't want to say they're going to win the series. I predicted them to lose against Vegas, and if I had to absolutely make a bet, I would not bet on them to win because I would believe that Vegas is more likely to win than Vancouver, but I legitimately think they still have more to give. I think the Canucks are still going to be in this series. Game 2 is going to see some adjustments from Travis Green, and we're going to see a different Canucks team in Games 2, 3, and beyond than we have seen here in Game 1, because this pattern has honestly showcased itself every time the Canucks have lost terribly in this postseason. And despite the fact that Vegas is the best opponent the Vancouver Canucks have faced this entire postseason, I still think there's more to give for this Canucks team. So I'm not going to write the team off after one game. Who knows? Maybe because I say that I'm not writing them off, this is the time they actually get swept in my somewhat cynical prediction that I could have made where I said this team is done actually comes true because I said they weren't going to win after game one in mini and then they won and then I said they weren't going to win after game four in St. Louis and then they won. It only makes sense for me to say here that because I think that they still can win, they're going to lose, but regardless, it's been a feast here tonight. Let's go into the actual game here, because immediately after the puck dropped, in period number one, we saw the speed of the Vegas Golden Knights come to play, and we saw the Vancouver Canucks try to compete with that speed, and for the most part, it was a very, very fast-paced game with lots of scoring chances, and... Immediately, right off the bat, Canucks fans got a taste of the number one round-robin seeded team that hadn't lost a single game up until game number four against Chicago in this entire return-to-play postseason format. They were 7-1 and one coming into this game, and the big portion of Canucks fans watching this that did not know why the rest of Canucks fans were saying, man, I wish we played Dallas instead of Vegas, 
Oh, you guys got educated here today, eh? Yeah, totally. You see exactly why. The Vegas Golden Knights, they excel at literally everything the St. Louis Blues tried to excel at, and even did excel at, because I said it in the previous video, man. Vegas is a better St. Louis. They're faster, they're quicker, they're more physical. This team had like 19 hits in the first period, averaging a hit a minute. And Antoine Roussel and Ryan Reeves are the two guys who are going after each other. That's providing our big sense of entertainment early on. But the Golden Knights struck quickly. It was Jonathan Marcheseau, 11.37 into the first period. A beautiful play where Jacob Markstrom ultimately gets caught a little bit outside of his net. And Marcheseau was there to pick in the garbage, pull it in. Very good patience on that goal. He pulled off the old Radom Verbata. The goalie is out, and instead of just whacking it towards the goal, you finesse it. Backhand, forehand, into the open cage. 1-0 Vegas at this point. And the first period ends ends off there. Well, it didn't end right there, there was nine minutes more to play, and then it ended. But taking a look at the reception on Twitter, Reddit, etc., after the first period, a lot of Canucks fans were somewhat getting a little bit wary. Because it was no secret that the Vegas Golden Knights had a very big majority of the possession and the chances compared to the Vancouver Canucks after that first period. But then the second period happened, and in the second period, well, we saw... Riley Smith, Mark Stone, Alex Tuck, okay, straight up, it is a 4-0 game at the end of the second, Riley Smith gets a power play goal, Mark Stone gets a tip in, Alex Tuck gets a breakaway of all things, Tuck is a very good player by the way, underrated, speedster, good on the rush, good on breakaways, he knows how to score goals, and... Around the time of the second goal of the game, when Riley Smith got that backhander in, I was kind of like, you know what? This is going to be a feast. This is going to be a feast of whale meat right here by Mr. Golden Knight himself. And this is something that I really was just kind of expecting as the game went on. So as there were more Golden Knights goals again and again and again, eventually in the third period, Max Patch already with a snapshot causing Jacob Markstrom to get pulled and Demko to come in. I was kind of like, you know, this is going to be a really good learning experience for the Canucks. Because again, I said it at the beginning. This team knows how to bounce back after playing terrible games. They've done that every single time they played a terrible game against Minnesota and St. Louis. So to me, this isn't going to be a 4 nothing sweep. I could very well say it could be, and I could be just very pessimistic and cynical about it, but rationally taking a look at how this team has been able to bounce back, identify their flaws, identify the strengths of the opposite team, and use their own prep time to counter that in the next game, it gives me hope that we're going to see a completely different team in game two. Now again, the reverse Lego Jinx may indeed have something to do with it. Maybe because I called them out for actually being able to bounce back, this is the time they're not going to be able to bounce back. But again, I don't really believe in all that stuff, that hocus pocus, hockey gods, magical stuff deep down in my heart. I'm just trying to take a look at things rationally now here, won't we? So going into game two, I'm expecting a completely different Canucks team, a team that will know actually how to counteract these Vegas Golden Knights strategies. Because the Knights have some really good things at their disposal. On the PK, which a lot of Canucks fans were saying, this is where we have the edge because we have a good power play. Vegas hasn't had an amazing penalty kill, but Vegas was able to counteract the entire reason the Canucks power play is great. Quinn Hughes. Quinn Hughes, if you give this guy space up top, the entire power play flows through Quinn. And Vegas found a way to completely shut that down. Come over, charge up at Quinn, don't give him the space, puck chop in his stick handling area, and they cleared the puck so many times effectively because of it. There was a very good strategy going on by Vegas, and the Vancouver Canucks now, well, it's their turn in the chess match. We'll see how they match up in Game 2. I'm not going to say that the Vancouver Canucks are necessarily going to win Game 2, but I'm expecting a much better effort. I'm expecting better efficiency, better coverage, better breakouts and passes, not just trying to lob it up in the air. Hail marrying it, hoping it finds somebody. I'm expecting a lot more structure and format to this Vancouver Canucks team in the next coming game. So, am I still believing in this team? Honestly, I kind of am. Even though I've been kind of noted to jump off the bandwagon, I think I'm on board this time still. 
Who knows if I'll be proven right or wrong, but at the end of the day, Vegas, man, you guys are playing a great game. There's a reason Canucks fans did not want to match against you. Y'all just absolutely stomped and feasted on the Vancouver Canucks here in Game 1. We'll see what happens in Game 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was Atrocious 99, and bye.